Good morning. Welcome to the daily Bible study for the Selang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If you have never been to our building because you are joining us from someplace else in the Philippines or someplace else in the world, we are located in Bayan or city proper of Silang Cavite, which puts us about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport. We hope that you enjoy and gain from our study of God's word today. Prayer request, Wilma, my prayer request, goodbye. Uh, sure, uh, that God may lessen the pain that uh, my sister-in-law is uh, experiencing right now. Okay. Is she having a rough go of it right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Julie, we're still praising God for your sister's job. Is there anything else going on? Um, yes, sir. Um, prayer request. Another one. Uh, hopefully next week, sir, um, they will be having medical. And hopefully the medical will be a good result. Okay, so she needs a good, she has her job offer, but she has to pass her medical, right? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Vanessa? Um, sir, of course, praising for all the hearing prayers and thanks for the good health of my family and to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. Anna. Uh, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive, especially the good health. And Zaldi. Continuous healing for Kuya Zaldi. Okay. And his, his wife was also harmed in the accident, right? And praising God for the healing of my... Of, my auntie Lizelle. Okay. And um, by the way, we need to give Fred a real quick Tagalog lesson. At A is sister. Sister. Kuya yeah. is older brother. <laughs> yes, sorry. And enlightenment for my sister Mildred. Okay. Larissa? Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, healing for every person that in pain and Thanksgiving and uh, safety for my family and to all of us. Okay. Roxanne? Yes, there is still a better result for my stepmother's laboratory and peace and safety and good health for everyone and for our families. Okay. Uh, when, when are Herbert lab results due back, Roxanne? I possibly, sir, it's Monday, sir, they'll be back on PGH. Okay. PGH, Philippine General Hospital. Fred. Yes, sir. Uh, Ronald Lynn? Uh, sir, uh, thanksgiving for all the blessings, strength, and good health to everyone and especially to my family and praising God because um, he used his powerful hand to touch my the heart of my father to be here every Sunday here in Silang Church. So, did you did you catch that Fred? Yes. Okay. He's attending her her, her dad. Her, her father, father is, is going to start attending with us on Sunday. Amen. Elaine. For your request, a good health and protection for my family and for everyone also. And praising God for praising God that my PC is already fixed so that I can go back work from home, work at home. Welcome back. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Fred, it's on you. All right, Val. So how about yourself? Did you, you didn't say your prayer? Oh, I've got that procedure tomorrow. I have a bone graft tomorrow, and uh, I hope that it goes well. All right. So, okay. Well, we come before you. Just give me your thanks for allow us to see this day. 
that we can come together as a family and uh, participate in one of the most uh, powerful things on earth, and that is power of prayer. We give you thanks for providing that gift and uh, giving us encouragement to utilize that gift, as your word says, to pray without ceasing. And so we uh, thank you for the many blessings, such as prayer, which sets us apart from the uh, false religions that have no communication with their so-called idols and gods, but that you being the God of the universe has provided that um, insight <clears throat> and opened that spiritual door for us to um, be welcomed into the throne room of, of your of providing holy prayers that hopefully are a fragrant offering to your uh, nostrils as your word describes. Pray, Lord, that you may see us uh, worthy servants of yours in your household to uh, uh, receive our, our prayers and our requests, uh, not as um, um, wayward um, followers of you, but faithful uh, to your word, faithful to your mission, and faithful to your kingdom and church. As we lift up uh, prayers for on behalf of Wilma, she asks for prayers for her uh, sister-in-law, that her pain will be decreased. And Julie, Julie asks for gives praise for her sister's job, but also uh, asks for prayers for her medical clearance. <clears throat> and we give thanks in general for just our families, for the health that you've provided for our families and continued health. We also ask for prayers for Anna, Anna and I ask for prayers for sister and older brother and for their healing, as well as for the uh, enlightenment of her family and the older sister. We uh, pray for uh, Roxanne. She asks for prayers for her stepmother's lab results to come back favor favorably or to give her the information that sh she needs to point her in the right direction to resolve and correct the, the issue of the problem. We also pray for Brandon, we give thanks for her father in deciding to worship and attend the uh, services. We pray that you may bless him with insight and, and knowledge of your word that doesn't just uh, give them information, but allows him to be transformed. And born again, we be thankful for Lane for her return, and we pray, Lord, for her continued relief in her schedule, and the ability to be able to be more flexible, and pray for that for her in the future. We also pray for Ernest for his healing of his upcoming surgery and his grown, grown graph, pray, Lord, that you may guide the doctors in, in their um, um, surgery that he will be having. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody, open your Bibles, please, to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. <clears throat> Good morning, Seth. Good morning, Marvin. <clears throat> Morning, Galatians, Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Start us off, Wilma. Unmute, please. 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. And verse, our, we read 16 to give us context for verse 17, where our study will begin today. Fred, verse 17, please. But if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we Jews find ourselves also among the sinners, doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. Uh, are you reading NIV, Fred? Yeah. Okay. Because the ESV says, tells us that, uh, is Christ then a servant of sin? And the answer is still the same. Certainly not. That gives us 16 and 17 together. Give us some context. Because 17 is an answer to an argument that is going to be made. And he's addressing this same argument in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Start us in verse 1, please, Vanessa. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 says, What shall we do then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2, please, Anna. And verse 2 says, By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Verse 3, Larissa. And verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So we've been baptized into Christ Jesus. But Paul's anticipated, just a moment, Paul's anticip anticipating the argument that some are going to make against salvation through grace. They want to go back to that law, by the way. Our Seventh-day Adventist friends do very much the same thing. The argument that they are going to present against the principle of salvation by faith would be founded upon a promise that one could continue in sin if their salvation were based on a simple faith. Now, it is true that Jude wrote that some have, you know what, let's just read Jude, Jude verse 4, Jude Verse 4, Roxanne. A new place. Jude verse 4, for certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who prevent, pervert, who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Um, what does your NIV say, Fred? For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God, of our God, into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign, uh, so sovereign and Lord. And I will tell you that the Calvinist who tells you that it doesn't matter how you live, you can live any way you want, yourself. you are once saved, always saved, or secure. 
perseverance of the saints, uh, they promote that. In fact, I've heard preachers say it doesn't literally how you, no matter how many women you sleep with or how much alcohol you drink or how many drugs you take, none of that is a threat to your salvation. And that's just not true. Uh, they are the people that Jude is talking about here. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13, Ronald Lynn. Let me get some Go ahead, Fred. So I think it also, you know, how falsehood begets falsehood. So when they have the doctrine that there's nothing that you can do, well, I think it's they apply it in a sense of positive or negative, meaning there's nothing that you can positively positively do to earn your salvation even obedience right but then on the other side of the coin the way i'm understanding it is a view that also there's nothing that you can do negatively that can Im impact your salvation so i think it's also spawns out of that um you know uh, false doctrine well most, what are your bad, thoughts on that? most bad theology is an overreaction to bad theology. What we have to understand is where Calvinism came from. And Calvin's background was that he was a Roman Catholic priest. And in many ways, Roman Catholicism teaches that if you do enough good things, if you burn enough candles, if you say enough Hail Marys, if you pray to the statues enough times, if you give enough money, if you make enough pilgrimages, then God owes you salvation. It is impossible for us to be good enough to where God owes us salvation. Is that correct or not, class? Yes. Prove it. Who wants to give me a verse? Galatians 2 8. Ephesians. Ephesians, yeah. Ephesians 2 8 and 9. Very good. Uh, however, they went to the other ditch. You can't earn salvation. But if you're not obedient, you can lose your salvation. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13. And Ronald Lynn, I believe it's you. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Good morning, beautiful. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 16, Elaine. First Peter chapter 15, sorry. No, chapter two. There is no chapter. First Peter doesn't have 15 chapters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chapter two, verse 15. Yes. It says here, for this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. And let's take 16 to go with that, please. Uh, Julie? And verse 16, leave us people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, evil, but leaving as servants of God. So the instructions are exceedingly clear that we have to live. We're not supposed to use our freedom as a permit to live a fleshly, earthly, sinful lifestyle. Well, Paul makes... Say it again. What verse was that? Say this. That's First Peter chapter two, verse sixteen. Paul makes his statement of definition in Galatians chapter five and verse six. Seth, you want to grab that?
Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circum uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. So it, our faith has to work through love. Let nobody think that they are justified by faith and grace alone. We can some people might think that we can live as men without a law from God. That's our Calvinist friends. Christians are not under a law as a meritorious code of conduct. You don't earn anything. But we are under a law as a direction of life. Obedience to the law of Christ is not based on our merit to earn salvation. Obedience is based on the fact that salvation has already been obtained through faith in God's grace and our obedience to the gospel. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Marvin? No, it's Cora. 5-1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It says... Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 2 to go with that, Marvin. Verse 2, through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Christians, therefore, we work in obedience to the law of Christ because we have been saved by our obedience to the gospel. We do not work in order to be saved, but we work because we are saved. Romans chapter 6, start us in verse 3. Romans chapter 6, start us in verse 3, Wilma. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Verse 4, Fred. The, uh, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we Two, they live in life. Verse three, four, five, Vanessa. Verse five, for it we have been united with him in a death like this. We shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. Okay, verse six, Anna. And verse six says, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. We should no longer be enslaved to sin. Why? Because we've been buried with Christ and raised to a newness of life. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start us in verse 1, Larissa. Uh, first Corinthians uh, 15 1. Now I would remind you, brother, of the gospel I preached to you, which you receive, in which you stand. Verse 2, Ro Roxanne. And by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. What is the most important word in that sentence? If. Somebody said it. Who said it? Cora, was that you? Yeah. 
What's yeah. the important word in First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 2? The I if. 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 Conditional if statement. How many times have you guys heard me say that? Many times. If you do this, if you go to work all week, come Friday, what happens? Somebody said it. I can't hear you. No pay. Okay. But if you if you don't, what happens? Uh oh. No pay if you don't go to work. Okay. Verse three, Ronald. And verse three says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Verse 4, Elaine. Verse 4, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Okay. Julie, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, please. Ephesians 2 and 10, a chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, what are we supposed to do? Walk in the good works that God has created for us to do, right? Okay. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 18, Seth. Galatians chapter 2, verse 18 says, For if I rebuild what I tore down, I prove myself to be a transgressor. If I build what I tore down. If Paul was to return to a covenant of law keeping, he would be found a transgressor of the new covenant of Christ. That's his point. In returning to an attempt to be justified legally by flawlessly living under the law. He si went around or sidestepped the law of grace and faith, and he becomes a transgressor of the law of grace and faith. For if he gives up God's forgiving grace in his life, in this transition from the defense of his apostleship, to the justification of faith. Paul approaches those Judaizing teachers that would attempt to be married to both Jesus and to the ordinances of the Levitical or Mosaic law. Let's take a look at Romans chapter seven. Romans chapter seven, Cora. Seven what? Seven one, please. Romans chapter 7 verse 1 Do you know do you not know brothers and sisters for I am speaking to those who know the law that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives Verse 2 Marvin Verse 2 for a married for a married woman, woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives but if her husband dies, she is re released from the law of marriage. Verse 3, Wilma. Verse 3, accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Now, Paul is going to get to the point here. Give us verse 4, Fred. So, my brothers and sisters, you also die to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another. 
to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God. So who do we belong to? To Christ. Jesus Christ. Good answer, Mar Marvin. Good job. Let's take a look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 19. Galatians 2 and 19, Vanessa. Galatians chapter 2, verse 19 says, for through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. Keep in mind here that in this verse, the article the is not a present tense. It's a reference to a law in general. Died to the law. Paul died to the law in the sense that he recognized that the law of Moses could not bring justification before God, Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Fred, one minute, you just read that one, right? Six, eleven. Yes, please. And it reads, in the same way, you count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Jesus Christ. Count yourselves dead to sin, right? Romans chapter 6, verse 14, Vanessa. Romans chapter 6, verse 14 says... For, for sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. Sin should have no dominion over you, right? We are under grace, but that doesn't give us permission to commit as many sins as we want. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, Anna. Romans chapter 8, verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin in death. Are we under the Mosaic or Levitical law? Ronald Lynn? Yeah. Are we still under... under are we still under the Old Testament law? No, not an M. No. No. Good answer, Marvin. She dialed a friend. Just a moment. So the law was a meritorious system of justification, but what it brought about was condemnation, not life. The reason for this is simple. Everybody sin, and sin condemns us. Romans 3.23, does anybody know it by heart? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Very good. So all have sinned, right? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Another memory verse. Anybody got it? For the wages of sin is death, but the glory of God is eternal life. Very good. The free gift of God is eternal life. Good answers, Julie. We must die to the law by not seeking to obey the law as a system of salvation. However, we have to be alive to God. The Mosaic law and its covenant that brought the Jews to the New Testament and the New Covenant. The Mosaic law brought death to those who wanted to use it as the end within itself to gain salvation. The other New Testament law and covenant brings life as long as a person does not make the New Testament law a legal system of justification 
as the Jews made the Mosaic or Levitical law. Paul is essentially saying that law brings death, for all have sinned, Romans 3.23. Jesus brought life, for he showed the grace of God. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Elaine? Romans chapter 6, verse 11. That says here, So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. Julie? Second Corinthians chapter five, chapter five, verse fifteen says here, and he died for all that those who live might no longer li live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. So we can live through Christ. Hebrews chapter nine, verse fourteen says. Hebrews chapter 9, what verse again, sir? 14. Verse 14 says, How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? There it is. Are we saved by our works? No. Should we therefore can we live any way we want to? Also, no. no. Okay. And believe it or not, somehow today, we uh, managed to end 